Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Placentia Presbyterian Church. Welcome to everyone here in the sanctuary and welcome to everyone watching us online. If you're able, if you could please stand and join me in the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Let Israel say, Let the house of Aaron say, Let those who fear the Lord say, When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with, with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to, be, than to trust in humans. Let us worship the Lord. It is well, it is 
It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. You are the rock on which I. sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let the rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow the heaven can heal earth has no sorrow the heaven can heal so lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. Lay down your heart, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless and all those who stray. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's a rest for the weary. A rest that endures Earth has no sorrow The heaven can be yours So lay down your burden Lay down your shame All who are broken Lift up your face sorrow the heaven can heal earth has no sorrow the heaven can heal so lay down your burdens lay down your shame all who are broken lift up your face Come home, 
you're not too far so lay down your hurt lay down your heart come as you are come as you are come as you are Please be seated. This morning, our first scripture reading is from Luke 19. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the Lord. So we pour out 
And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great are you Lord And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great are you Thank you. Thank you. I was just realized that the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, not the Lord. I need a, I should have cleaned my contacts this morning. Sorry about that. <laughs> Again, welcome to Placentia Presbyterian Church, to everyone here and everyone online. Um, we have over in the corner our prayer candles. If any time during the service, you want to walk over there and raise someone in prayer and write out a prayer, you're welcome to do so. We do not pass the offering plate here, but you have um, ways to give out in the Northex. There are boxes for your tithes and offerings, and you can also give online. In the bulletin today are our prayer concerns and two families we want to lift up. Uh, one is Sean over here, and so he asks for continued health, and you can wish him well out in, in the patio after service. And the other special family is Jeff and Joanna Velasco, and um, asking for prayers for the new grandson, Cruz. And I see grandma's here too. So, um, prayers for Cruz and for Christina, um, with a premature baby, but um, we lift you all up, the entire family, in prayers. Um, Pastor Ryan is out today. He is leading the youth of our presbytery at a retreat. So, we have a pinch hitter today. Actually, actually, actually an all... Actually, an all-star. <laughs> uh, Reverend Paul Reeves is with us. He was our interim pastor for about three years. And so we're going to take a time now, a quick two minutes, to greet those around you and to come up and greet Paul. May the sanctuary remind us that each of us is a sanctuary. Let's sing together.
seated. So good to see many of the faces I've seen before. And it's also exciting for me to see faces I don't know. That's God working in your midst. There is a face that you have not seen before, but I see every day, and that's my dear wife. This is Ann right here. I don't know if you, you probably don't know this. Ann and I graduated from high school. Ballast Freeze High, back in 1966. We just missed the dinosaurs. <laughs> and we connected almost 50 years later. God is good. Let's pray together. Creator God, we are truly a sanctuary, not because of what we've done, but because how you made us, how you created us. You put your image inside of us. You gave us a soul. And we are restless until we find our rest in you. So... Help us hear your word fresh and anew about how you intended and planned for our salvation. Through Christ I pray. Amen. Our passage today is taken from Exodus. It is the well-known passage of Moses and burning of the bush. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying, crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. And I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. This is God's word to us. Thanks be to God. I was in bed, and the phone rang. I looked at the clock. Hours before I would get up, it was 2 a.m. in the morning. My three-year-old was fast asleep, my wife next to me. I picked up the phone And this is what I heard. If you die tonight, would you go to heaven? (laughs) This is true. This happened to me. When I was about 30 years old. What the? (laughs) 
groggy, stunned, I replied, I, I, I trust what God has done for me in Jesus Christ, and he hung up. Bizarre, totally bizarre, but it did happen. As I reflected on it today, who would pull such a stunt? What was the caller's purpose? Was it a way to evangelize? Was he trying to stir doubt and fear inside of me? Engage in a conversation? Maybe aiming me toward a, a conversion? Or maybe he thought, hey, this is a Presbyterian pastor, and they're not, they don't believe the right things. <laughs> they don't have the right theory of atonement. You know, there are a number of theories of atonement. These are explanations of how God puts us right and reconciles us to God and forgives us of our sins. And there's a number of them. There's a ransom theory. There's a substitution theory. There's a scapegoat. There's a satisfaction theory. There's Christ the Victus theory. Which one? If we had talked further, I wonder if he would insist on the right one. Vitally important to him. Because if he didn't have the right one, you would not have salvation. But, you see, the fact that he called me 2 a.m. in the morning revealed to me that he vitally lacked, he vitally lacked the consequence of salvation. A consequence that makes being a Christian every single day a joy. So today, if I received some kind of a call like that, I would have said, yes, yes, I am saved beyond this life, but there is so much more to salvation. Salvation is about the here and the now. In this life. Now the critical historical event that propelled the story of salvation is the story of Moses. Moses is the beginning. Jesus is the end. This is the event, the burning bush that God uses to recruit Moses to be the leader. And in fact, if you think about it, no Moses, no Old Testament. No Exodus. No Passover. No new promised land. The day that Moses saw that burning bush not being consumed was strange and mysterious. And so he walked over to see it. And out of nowhere came that voice, take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. Now, this was just maybe the 20 feet? No, not just the 20 feet around the bush. This was the whole mountain, Mount Horeb or Mount Sinai, the one where Moses would talk with God, the one where he would receive the Ten Commandments. Yes, but the Lord started with Moses, ended with Jesus. The angel Gabriel told Mary that this baby of, his, of hers was going to save the people from their sins. And Christ did. God in Christ expanded the geography of holiness. Not just Mount Sinai, not just a burning bush, but the whole world. Every square inch of this earth is holy because of what God's done in Jesus Christ on that cross. And that means your house 
on the plot you're on is holy. That means where you work is holy. That means this place is holy. That means the grocery store is holy. That means every single place is holy. Even God's is holy. All because of what God did around 30 A.D. Jesus became the source of eternal salvation for all. Once. Once. And for all people. One of our confessions in 1967 says it this way. In giving himself freely for them, Jesus took upon himself the judgment under which all men stand convicted. God raised him from the dead, vindicating him as Messiah and Lord. The victim of sin became victor and won the victory over sin and death for all men. I bet the caller that night would agree with that. But due to the fact that he called me at 2 a.m., disrupting my sleep, he clearly showed his lack of understanding, of salvation. It was too short-sighted. It was too minuscule. He, as well as all of us, can learn more about salvation from Zacchaeus. Jesus entered Jericho. It was about 10,000 people at the time. Surrounded by a huge crowd of people just following along the way. There were a lot of... <laughs> Jesus' people hanging around him. And Zacchaeus heard the commotion. Now, Zacchaeus is a very small man. The average man back in that time was five feet, five inches. He wasn't five feet. He was four foot something. Maybe eight, four foot ten. His entire life, he looked up at people. Imagine being a child out there and playing and kids made fun of him. Disregarded on the playground. He felt small. He was a joke in Jericho. You could hear it now. Zacchaeus, would you please stand up? Zacchaeus, are you standing? As an adult, he felt disrespected, ignored. Maybe even his parents felt ashamed of him. And those feelings packed inside of his chest, crowding them, ricocheting around on each other, insults rumbling constantly in his mind, daily reminders, internally squeezing him. A tightness making him grumpy, on edge, ready to strike out at the slightest insult. So there came a time when he had to support himself. And he had to choose what was he going to do. He couldn't depend on his parents forever. Ah, I will become a tax collector. Yes, people will be forced to respect me. I'll collect taxes for these occupying foreigners. And if somebody doesn't want to pay their tax, I'm going to bring in the army. And they're going to have to pay. Yes. So proficient of collecting taxes, he was the chief tax collector, the four foot eight guy. So he became a very wealthy man. They dared not cost, cross him, or they would pay. He didn't care if he was called a collaborator. He didn't care if he was called a Roman stooge. No. Undersized Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus, no doubt. Things traveled fast in those days. He'd healed some lepers. He had parables about a lost sheep that kind of got around. And then, 
Word came to him of what Jesus did just outside of Jericho. He actually healed the blind man who sat there at the city gate. A blind man, the people that passed every single day, he had been there for years. Everybody knew him. And he healed them. He healed them. <sighs> Incredible. Incredible. So Jesus is coming. And Zacchaeus wants to catch a glimpse of this man. Crowds were filling the little tiny narrow streets. And there's, there's Zacchaeus. Once again, he's so short, he can't see anything. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to run over here, and I am going to climb up on a tree, and I'm going to see Jesus. He had to see Jesus. He took an extraordinary effort, but he wanted to see him. And then Jesus came, got closer and closer and closer and closer And Jesus looked up and saw him. <sighs> Zacchaeus, he said, come down. I am going to stay at your house. Stay at my house? Stay at my house? He would host this miracle man. People grumbled and muttered. Oh, stay at the house of a sinner. <laughs> Zacchaeus was deaf to all these insults. Jesus recognized him. He recognized this runt of a man. This ostracized one. Jesus shined on. His eyes shined in on Zacchaeus. His love, his compassion. And there was a sense of acceptance and, and grace flowing inside of Zacchaeus' chest. And the Spirit of God reached down into the depths of Zacchaeus. His size no longer mattered to him. His desire to be big and respected that desire dissolved. His chest no longer felt cramped. A new openness. His mind darted to those past dishonest dealings, times when he used the army to overpower those reluctant taxpayers, many of whom he just outright cheated. So Zacchaeus scrambles down to the ground. He announces to the entire crowd, Look, Lord, heads up, everyone. Here and now I will give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anyone, I'm going to repay them back four times. Mouth opened. <laughs> Eyes bugged out. They couldn't believe what they were hearing. We're hearing. The people were stunned. And hearing this declaration coming from the mouth of Zacchaeus, Jesus says, Today salvation has come to this house. One. And then he goes on and says, in a sense, and this is what the heard, people heard. The one who you thought were not part of God's people is part of God's people. <laughs> Zacchaeus must have felt seven feet tall. Don't you think about it? He must have felt seven feet tall. The man who had just healed his blind man is going to come and stay in his house. Worker of wonders. This worker of wonders publicly affirmed Zacchaeus' worth and his value. In front of all those people who had mocked him, some had mocked him for years. 
a man despised by so many. So friends, Zacchaeus becomes an object lesson. He becomes an object lesson for those standing around in that moment. Jesus then announces his life's purpose and calling. He, this man, he's an example. He's an example of what I have come to do, son of man, to seek out and save the lost. The Greek word here is, is apapolomai. That's the Greek word for lost here. And it means those in, who have a state and a feeling of being marred inside. Those who are feeling even destroyed. Those who are perishing. When Jesus said this, what he basically is saying is, when I find these people, I'm going to act in ways that are going to save them from that state that they're in. Being marred or crumbling, pieces of them just being destroyed, perishing, being lost. The same word that Jesus used in this context is also used in the Gospel of John when the writer says, puts what Jesus said, I've come not to judge the world but to save the world. And here's this Greek word, sozo. The Greek word for salvation, it means to save, to heal, to make whole, to make deliver. And that's exactly what Jesus did for Zacchaeus. He saved him from the marred identity. He healed him from his hurts. He delivered him from a life of vindictiveness, that brokenness inside of him, that was that corrosiveness inside of him. And Zacchaeus was on the way to becoming whole inside. But there's more. Yes, there's more. Zacchaeus experienced what Old Testament writers often connected to salvation. And it's called Yasha. And we see it up here on the board. Yasha. Let's say that together. Yasha. That's often connected. That's often connected. People being set free into a spacious place rather than being in a confined, constricted place. In fact, you read about that earlier in the worship service. We find it here. We find it essentially, you see, We look at the next slide here and we find you referred to this earlier in the worship service. See, Yasha means to be free from what binds and restricts, thus to deliver and to rescue. And the next slide shows what you read earlier in the service. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord and he brought me into a spacious place. A space. See, that made sense. David, when he was being chased after by his enemies, he would get up into, on a rock, and he'd say, God's my salvation. In other words, you guys can shoot arrows up here. You can, hey, you can't reach me. I'm in a spacious. Salvation in the Old Testament is connected to spaciousness. Yasha. That's what happened to Zacchaeus. Jesus looking at him triggered an expansion inside of Zacchaeus. His heart and soul no longer felt cramped. A new spaciousness inside grew inside. An internal experience of God's spirit working and dwelling inside of him. What happens next? That spaciousness gets acted out. 
The spaciousness that he feels, being seven foot tall now, gets acted out. I'm going to give half of my possessions to the poor, and anybody I treated, I am going to pay them back four times. God's loving presence opened and spurred him to do righteousness. In other words, to do things to, that bring about the right relationships as God intended. All those whom he cheated, he knew that he had cheated them. He knew it was not the right relationship he should have. And to rectify the past, what's he do? He does a specific act. I'm going to pay you four, back to, four times over. I'm going to give to the poor. He does justice. To make things right. That's what genuine salvation brings about within people. Within us. God loves enters our hearts, triggering within us a spaciousness inside of us that gives us a divine identity and a divine desire to love as freely as we have been loved. And that is the part of salvation that caller didn't understand or didn't know or forgot about. The spaces of salvation that prompts one to love people with the same grace that wipes away forgiving sins, that gives a person a complete assurance that they will one time go on beyond this life and live with God. That kind of salvation doesn't call people two in the morning. <laughs> it doesn't do it. True? True. Hey, friends, the good news today is that we can accept salvation. The salvation of spaciousness. When we believe Jesus died for our sins, we say, yes, I accept what you've done. Here's what I've done. And we, and we tell them what's true. And all the sins, amazingly, are gone. Put right with God. Forgiven and valued. And that means every single day, you can wake up in the morning and look yourself in the mirror and say, good morning, son of God. Good morning, daughter of God. Good morning, child of God. And as we accept that identity, we leave behind all those hurtful messages, all those experiences that dispute the Christ one identity given to us by Christ. Plus, we never need to fear about death. You and I have an eternal home. But from Zacchaeus, we also learn the second part of salvation on this earth. The experience of God's spacious love inside of us empowers us to find ways to live out this spacious love within ourselves first. Friends, God wants to rescue and deliver you and me from whatever binds us, whatever captivates us, whatever keeps us broken and weighing us down, even maybe enslaves us to harmful, life-sapping, marred feelings, desires, and behavior. The question is, do you want that? That's the question. And friends, we all ask it. Whether we say it out loud or not. Do I want it? 
So here, he, for him to see Jesus, Jesus, Zacchaeus goes and climbs up a tree. We need to want to see Jesus. We must let nothing to block us from letting Jesus see us. And that requires a conscious act. We don't need to climb up on a tree. Today or this next week, we can take a time, be quiet, and pray. Jesus, you said you came to seek and save the lost, those marred of what you intended for their lives. I want your spacious salvation in my life. Jesus, I invite you to reach in inside of me and dissolve the habits, the tendencies, the feelings, the priorities, the values that are restricting me, are cramping me, marring me, binding me, and maybe even enslaving me. And we name them. We name them. One by one. I want you, we can say, I want you to heal me, make me whole, deliver me. from what all this is doing in my life. How that's eroding, destroying me on the inside and my relationships. And instead, I want you to replace it with your yasha spaciousness. Now, we may need to say this prayer more than once. We may need to stay up in that so-called tree of prayer more than once. Putting ourselves consciously in front of Jesus. But as we pray that, and as we want that, God's mysterious spirit moves us inwardly, giving us more of the grace and the love and the compassion and the acceptance that Zacchaeus felt. More of that in our life. And as that happens, what what occurs within us is we discover there's a second part of of salvation in this life. Zacchaeus felt that inside of him. And then... He acted it out. He spoke about what he did, what he was going to do, and then he did it. You see, friends, as God's space of salvation grows and expands on the inside, new desires grow up inside of us. And we see fresh ways. We're more motivated to live out that yashas, yasha spaciousness out in the world. Aiming to do those things, to say those words, behave in those ways, to bring about the kind of relationship that Jesus came for the world to know, for your family to know, for your marriage to know, for this community to know. And as we do this, that you and I will know the ultimate goal of why God called Moses. Amen. Let's pray together.
Oh, gracious God, your salvation is so spacious. And what a beautiful and fitting word that we can connect to salvation. You know us so well. You know what we need. What is your spirit telling us right now in our lives where we lack your spacious salvation? Lord, stir us to put ourselves before you. We want to be seen by you. So you can do what only you can do. Lord, as we look around the world, we see lives that are marred, that are cramped. That are experiencing feelings and Situations that brings tears to your eyes. We think about people whom we know. What do they need? Put into our minds how we can help. Yes, our dear world is very crowded with hurt and tension and anger and revenge. We think about our minds quite often go to schools which now seem to be a battleground in many ways. Guide leaders to see ways to protect students and to provide ways they can have the best possible education to prepare them to be a citizen in this country. We think of battlefields out in the world where people are being injured and actually dying. Lord, we ask you to guide leaders to see ways to protect their people, but also to provide ways so people can live together peacefully. We pray for the homeless who've had so much to happen in their lives. Guide ways and give people strength and motivation to really do those things that will help all the variety of homeless find ways they can be safer and experience more wholeness. For the sick, those whom we know and those we don't know, we think about those we know and we offer them to you in this silence. And those who are grieving. I think about my own family and the loss of my brother. just days before his 85th birthday. May your spirit work within them and within all of us and those whom we know also so they can know how to remember them, how to celebrate their life, how to learn from their life, but also how to care for those who grieve with them. And we pray for a little cruise. Newborn of that, of Christina, whom we knew as a child and as a teenager, and now she's a mother. Wow. And for the whole family. Lord, continue to show us how we can grow. How this church can be 
people of spacious salvation and do things that will welcome people into the life of this community, but also do those things that will make a difference out in the community. And so we pray for Ryan as he's up there with the kids, a big bear, that to protect them and bring them back. May there be safety the entire time. Well, there's so much to pray about. It's good to know that we have a prayer we can always turn to. Help us remember that what we're to be, we're supposed to be kingdom builders, kingdom bringers. Your spacious kingdom. And so we say together your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Those Let's ready? sing. <laughs> please, please stand with us and sing from the inside out.
heart and my soul I give you control Consume me from the inside out Lord, let justice and praise Become my embrace To love you from the inside out Everlasting, your light will shine Where all else fades Never ending, your glory could be on all faith And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise From the inside out for my soul Cries out everlasting, your light will shine Where all else fades I want to thank Paul for the inspiration today. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I, I thank you. I thank you. And as we head out the sanctuary, let's climb down out of that tree. There are many ways we can serve the Lord this week, including the food drive. You can pick up, purchase groceries, bring them to the kitchen, fill up the box for one for each family to help serve the community. Then there's also a blood drive on Thursday. You can use a QR code um, out in the, the lobby to sign up and give much needed blood to the community. You can check other opportunities on our Wednesday email. Um, if you aren't signed up for it, please go to the website and sign up for the newsletter. It should also include next, week, uh, next week's Lenten Bible study. You all have learned a new Hebrew word. Let's say it. Yasha. Friends. Go from this place. Seek Yasha in your life. Jesus, I've come to save. To seek the lost and save them. I've come that you might have abundant life. Knock. It will be opened unto you. Seek and you'll find. Let's go from this place with a deeper conviction that we are God's saved and being saved people. And now may the grace of God, the amazing Holy Spirit, be within each one of you. Doing that which is pleasing to God's sight as you open your life experiencing more and more spaciousness and sharing that spacious love with those whom you meet as this church continues on its brand new chapter being the people of God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.